look at making a concertina book. Now, a concertina book is very simply a folded um, book booklet um, of some description. And at its most simple is this. And that is what you would call a concertina book where it simply folds um, into itself and you can go like that or you can go like that as if it's a little book or you can look at it opened. Um, so that's the simplest form of concertina book and for, some, for many of you this is what you'll end up doing because it's very effective, it works well, it's not too much of a um, trial to create, there's not much drama in making it and the good thing with it is it can vary in scale, it might be a, a very tall one, it might be a very, um, it might be a long one long and narrow so you know landscape kind of kind of thing this one has got a little additional fold that folds over to the front which is quite nice so you can turn um, one of these very simply I'm just looking for uh, this one here um, you can yeah so you can do a concertina book but you can just very simply at the end section of it, I've done, I've got a fold, but then I've got another fold like this. And this is what the boning, the bone tool's for. It scores so that it'll actually make a, a firm um, fold. So you can do, basically do folds. So you can see there I've got a little fold, which turns that booklet into a little um, simply opening book type thing but also has the capacity to open right up so that's a really simple um, fold this one's one which is the same sort of thing but in this case the fold itself sits outside and then this is one that's not finished these little bits would be glued would be attached in some ways I was going to stitch them but I just haven't got around to it so the first and um, what's this tool called again so this is a bone it's a bone and normally traditionally they're made of bone a couple of you have got ones that are made of bone um, and the bone ones are really expensive to buy the plastic ones will do fine and every now and then you see these plastic versions at um, you know two dollar shops or art supply stores and you can pick them up cheaply a really good thing to pick up you can also get one and some of you might have one that looks like that okay that's going to do a similar job I prefer these they're just they're just right for the job and I'll talk a bit more about that later now some of you have got an embossing tool I don't know if that's going to really work but it's sort of do the job but really if you can find something that's that's got a bit of thickness to it that you could use um, even you know if you could get that clean you could even use something like that just something that's really clean and quite firm to be able to to score um, yeah have a, have a scrounge around even even like a really blunt butter knife would do it something like that would would work um, so there's a few you know there's a few options that you could potentially um, you could potentially use so um, so the idea of this is that we're going to use our um, we're going to use our uh, all our prints, and I'll talk a bit more about that later. So we've got those as, as the simplest form. The next form that's basically the same um, the same form is this one, whereby you do exactly the same concertina, but you cut out little slits, and then you can fold in on itself. So like that, and then you can fold them in on themselves. Equally, you could cut little windows that that acted as like a tab um, that sort of stuck out. So you can do windows, which is a full cut, which is quite nice when you actually see it, um, you know, standing up. Um, or you can do these these half cut windows. Very simple cut, but quite effective. So that's a really a couple of very simple modifications on that standard concertina. Um, 
You can also do this sort of thing. These are trifold, so you would call this a trifold. So it's just one, two, three. There's another one, one, two, three. And you could um, then attach those. So you could attach those to each other and you could make multiple, you know, multiple folds. And I've seen people doing doing this kind of thing, so, so that when they're all glued together, they kind of make a star, sort of a star pattern when they're opened up. So that's something else. You can do a fold like this, but with this part longer, so, so that when you put it into there, it loops. It makes like a like an arc shape, like sort of sort of like that and then each one makes that same same arc shape so you get almost a it's almost a flower pattern in the end so that can be quite nice too um, so that the couple of really simple ones um, there's oh that's the one that we just talked about I'm going to put the ones I've talked about over here so we don't get too confused um, there are also things that you can do like this one now, hopefully if I take this apart, I'll be able to remember how I did it. So this is a really simple, this is one that you can make out of an A4 sheet of paper. So it's got a cut here and a cut here. So first it's folded, first the whole thing's folded in half and then in thirds, yeah? So, so the whole thing, so imagine folded in half like that and then folded into thirds. So the whole thing's like that, and then it's got these cuts. So it's got one, two, and one, and two there. And then these just slot into themselves. So is that, whoops, i slot that one into itself. Oh yeah, no, that's because that's the end. So is that they then form a, um, a really simple concertina. And you could obviously do more pieces so is that, or a longer piece that's fairly short, but just gives you the idea of how that might work. When I'm trying to figure out what I want to do, I just use, um, I, I just get some bits of um, uh, photocopy paper and just play with that. Just something simple that's fairly easy to fold and you can just play until you get a fold that you like. Um, where, where was my pile of done ones? I can't remember now. Hmm, gone. Okay. Um, now there is another way, a little tricky um, one, which is quite cute, and that's this one here. So all it is is a long sheet of paper, folded, folded, folded. Yep, like that. So it's folded up like that. And then opened up and cut along there from this fold to this fold. And then you, uh, this is for the tricky bit, I can never remember how to put it back together, fold it back like this and then squeeze it. And then it makes a little book, which is very cute. Um, here's the same thing but just a different shaped piece of paper to begin with. So in this case, a long, thin piece of paper, opened up, squeezed together, and there's your little booklet. So that's a very, very simple one sheet of paper um, trick, tricky one. This is one that's a ripper. This is a great one because it's, it's you get a lot of bang for your buck with this one. So uh, folds up into a little square and then opens up into this very beautiful complex, what looks like complex fold. But is actually not a very complex fold at all. This is actually really simple to create. So if we look at that, we can see that that is a square. So each square is glued on. And all you have to do is you take the square into itself and this is where the boning tool comes into play because you just run it like that and it makes this very sharp and then you fold uh, into there and then in half I feel like I've 
I've done something wrong there. What? How do I do that? Oh, I know, I know, I did that wrong. So you go like this, you go like that, and then you fold this to there. Yeah, that's right. And this to there. It's a bit like an origami class. Okay, so that's the simple fold, like that. And then all you do, assuming I've got a glue stick somewhere, A lot of mess in here. Um, and I think the kids probably raided the glue stick. So imagine I've got a bit of glue stick. I put glue on that there. That sits like that. And then that's going to um, fold inwards. So if I do it this way, it's better because then it'll fold in on itself like this. like that as will this one here so imagine I glued that and then folding it in and in takes it just takes a little bit just to get it going so you want to do basically do that so inwards I'll just fold this bit and we'll be easy. Oh, inwards, outwards, beg your pardon. So one's in, that one's in. So this one's goes, that goes inwards. This one goes outwards, goes that way. That's better. Yeah, so inwards, outwards, inwards, outwards. Yeah, so that one goes down, this one comes up, that one goes down, this one comes up, if you can visualise that. So that's a really great one. It uh, looks it looks really amazing and complicated, but it's actually pretty simple once you start doing it. It becomes pretty straightforward. Um, there are then more complex ones. Um, oh, actually, I'll do. I'll just um, just take you backwards a little step and just show you with the fold. So I don't. I actually don't measure mine. I find measurements a problem because um, invariably they don't join that well because you have issues around there being, um, like the fold takes up a bit of space. But what I do is I use my I use my cutting mat. So most of mine follow a five centimetre grid just simply because that's the size of the cutting mat. But basically I'm taking my ruler up and I'm running my... Uh, my boning tool like that so that it's going to give me a really nice sharp you can see how that's going to fold sharp edge now what I do like to do and I haven't scored that one is I like to work on the reverse so so if it's got to fold this way I like to score on this side so it'll want to fold that way if I'm folding that way I like to fold on this side so I kind of end up folding um, like alternating and flipping it around as I go so that that then folds nicely and um, and then just a, a quick a quick score and you can see how that's um, you know looking really nice and crisp Obviously, you need to have clean. You need to have clean hands. It's important. Um, another interesting one is this one. Now, this kind of does your head in a little bit, um, but it's quite cool. I, I thought I had a smaller version, but I'm not seeing it. Um, okay, so this one is. I'm gonna I'm gonna unfold furl it so you can see what it is. So this is out of a single sheet of paper. And it heads itself off in different directions as it curls around. So each, each one is a square and it's made out of a square sheet of paper. So you can see that big square sheet of paper. And um, you've got a, you've, you can score across the whole thing. 
so you can score the whole piece of paper back and front and then you're cutting along this seam and then along and then along 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 until you get to that last square and then it's simply a matter of folding each one up on itself so there's only way, one way each one can go so you get to there and it's just got to start going that way you get to there it's got to start going that way and you get to there and it's got to start going that way it's pretty awesome because you end up with this massive concertina um, but uh, but out of out of just one piece of paper so that's some um, it's kind of cool that's a groovy little little fold there's other folds then um, that you can do whereby you can make it um, fit into so there's another little this is a standard concertina but it's got a little kind of almost a matchboxy sort of cover that opens and then the concertina appears but it's all one sheet of paper but there's two folds here so that you get that nice outside outside fold like that you might you might print on to the paper that you're going to use this one is cut out of the you know how I was saying about cleaning a roller this is just a sheet of paper that I've been two sheets of paper actually that I've been cleaning my roller on they're joined just here so I've joined them on the back um, just just along there the back is not great that's the only problem with that one it's really just a front only and um, and I would probably back that with something else so imagine you know that backed with another something some description um, but that works quite well and that could then have an image that flows through the whole thing um, on it um, then you get into this kind of envelope style which is uh, really cool that's another one um, so this this format is a bit more complex but what it does is it enables you to put makes little envelopes so you can put little things into it um, you know into each of these um, little sections and if I just unfurl one you'll see that it's not that complex so basically it's that so it's a um, it's a A4 sheet of paper um, and then folded in half and then folded back on itself like that so in half and then back on itself and then folded back on itself folded back on itself I'm doing this very quickly but so basically it's a concertina yeah so there's a simple concertina there and then op unfurled open back up again these pushed in these turned over and then re folded so we've got these little these little folds in here that we can put something into so very simple but really solid like it's quite stiff and solid um, that's a bigger sheet of paper so you can see that's a larger larger but narrower sheet of paper and that's given me a fatter um, you know fat, fatter sections which is probably a bit better you can use a similar a similar thing to that this one's very tiny <laughs> ridiculously small but it's the same sort of thing I can't actually remember how I did this one to be honest but each thing oh yeah so it opens up yeah so there's the fold there you can see the fold but they it folds in on itself and um, and it means that you've got these little trapped trapped compartments um, gone a bit of mess there I might have done a bit wrong but that's um, kind of cute too and again you could have images that open up so you could see little little things that you physically maybe even opened like that that reminds me of one of those little you know things what are they called there's another one same thing but it, way too chunky so that needs to be quite thin paper or much larger scale 
Another one that's interesting is this. Oh, there's another one like that. That's a tall, a tall thin one. So just a different, a different format, taller and thinner. Um, this is a nice one. I like this, this format. Um, so it sort of forms almost a little boat. And I think I was doing, yeah, I was doing one just today, just as a prep. So this one's pretty straightforward. What you have to do is um, uh, go along and score each section. Score and fold. Then the next thing that you have to do is, is fold each of these down on itself. It's really stiff. I missed one. I've missed that one. So if you're terrible at maths, there are ways around not having to be mathematical. So I don't use any maths at all um, because it's, you know, it's not a really strong suite for me. So I've just found other ways of doing it. You know, so you could make a grid that you could sit it on, that you worked off, that, that you used as your, um, as your guide. What you do have to be careful of though is is cleanness so this shouldn't be used for anything else because you don't want that to get dirty if that gets dirty it's going to transfer onto your um, onto your artwork which you don't want to do okay so that's got all of those marked in and then it's simply a matter of pushing in each of these now they call in in any of this kind of folded paper making they call these these valleys and mountains so mountains and valleys um, so when if ever you're following any instructions they always refer to to mountains and valleys that one hasn't been scored properly but we won't worry about it for now and then it should. Fold up on itself, and I would go along and score these actually as I went along each one, which I've done with these ones here. That's the um, Japon proofing, which is the thinner paper that you guys have got. You've got two sorts of paper. The thinner, smoother one is called Japon. J-A-P-O-N proofing. Japon proofing. The other one is called Fabriano Rossapina. Fabriano Rossapina. That's what this one here is made of. So it's quite different. It's very soft and flimsy. The Rossapina is tricky to fold and it wants to tear. So it's not as robust as the, the Rossapina will be will give you a nice crispy. Um, but I've given you a bit of each so that you've got you've got enough to play with. The other thing that I've given you is um, two sheets of each because it may be that you want your concertina book to be longer and you may have to join. Now if you do have to join, it's very straightforward to do. All you're going to do is just join. Um, and what I would do, um, so imagine this was the piece that was joining on. I... I would cut this piece to about that narrow, so quite narrow, 
and then I would glue the next section onto that just up there so it'll just disappear it'll more or less disappear on the fold you won't see it on the fold rather than having you know like a clear line so that's a fairly easy way to, to join them um, now you can take a print and you can do all those kinds of folds this is a this is a um, uh, intaglio print and you can see I've just done you know one of those simple folds um, so you can do that sort of thing this one's that same fold um, but it's on glassine paper so a really thin transparent um, sort of transparent paper I quite like the transparency of it sort of interesting um, you can make uh, book folders so this one is one of those ones that I showed you before that simple kind of fold um, but then it's just got a very simple folder now all this is it's got it's got two lines here to give me a crease fold a center fold and then these have been cut down yeah and then all that has to happen then is this comes into the middle and this one slides into there and this one slides into there and then it just sits as a nice little little book so that's kind of sweet um, um, the cover of the book is always tricky so you know you can do this kind of thing that I've just shown you you know this sort of thing where you've got a built-in cover um, or this sort of thing where you've got a you know, built-in cover or what I just showed you then wherever that is this type of thing so they're simple covers that work well but you can also make a cover um, uh, that's what I forgot I had some lovely book binding fabric but I forgot to put it in oh well you haven't got this um, but you can use a fat so you could use a fabric you could use black fabric or you could use this is proper book binding that lovely um, book binding fabric. I don't know if you can see that there but basically and I should have given you some cardboard as well I always think of these things late hopefully you can find some heavy cardboard around at home ideally that kind of really quite thick um, box board is uh, is perfect so look for something that you've got that's quite thick but not cor not corrugated so corrugated cards not going to be any good and that might what you find might dictate the sort of book that you do or if you haven't got any that might dictate that you're going to do one of those kind of self cover ones but you can see it's fairly straightforward to put something on there and then your the stuff that's going to go in here would go you know in there and in this case it's going to go right up to the edge um, of that so that it'll disappear and what you're going to end up with is something like this one whereby you've got your concertina but it's inside a lovely a lovely cover um, and you can see that that's just glued in yep so you know that's going to work really well um, you need to use a you need to use a um, Stanley knife so I'm hoping I should have given you a stand knife I didn't think of that either um, but yeah you want a Stanley knife hopefully you've all got something along those lines an NT cutter or a Stanley knife um, a scalpel blade is not going to be any good so avoid that's too wobbly um, and nice sharp blade so snap off the blade so it's nice and sharp and, and it's going to cut well you also need a metal ruler preferably rather than a plastic ruler because a plastic ruler is you know you're potentially going to cut into the plastic when you're cutting along here um, be careful that that ruler is nice and clean sometimes uh, you can like you can do this is a funny little this is my ruler that lives in my kit bag but this ruler has got um, adhesive cork on the back so is that when you're using it it doesn't scratch the surface that's basically the idea of those you don't want it to scratch the surface so you know you can you can put a bit of blue tape or something like that on the back Okay, 
Okay, now it comes to what you're actually going to do inside your book. Um, and this is where you've got to really start to think about, you know, the, the prints that you've got. And I'd recommend that you go through. So here's some that are just simple gelatin prints that I've cut out as a starting point. So I would make my book that so you know, that format. Um, and then, yeah, just start to find some prints <coughs> that I like. Hang on a sec. A really good thing to do with regard to this is to cut yourself a viewfinder. So just imagine, I'm just going to do a dodgy viewfinder. So you cut the viewfinder out exactly to the size that your, that your prints need to be, say it was that big. And then you're able to go along, you imagine this is one print, you're able to go along through it and go, oh yeah, I love that spot there. And you can trace it out and cut it out. Um, you can make this just ever so slightly bigger than it needs to be, so you've got a little bit of um, additional. But that's a great way to find good things within the prints. Because sometimes the prints themselves, they're not great. So what you would do is you'd go through the prints and you'd pull out the ones that... Yeah, you know, they're okay, but they're, they're, they're not the ones you love the best. Save the ones that you really love as full prints, put them aside, and then with the other ones you can start to um, start to cut them up. Now, you could also use your um, mono prints. I'll just grab a bit of mono print. Hang on. So you could use the mono prints um, and it may be that I don't even know what I'm doing here, but you know you can you can use the mono prints directly onto the, the gelatin prints. They can work really well. It might be like a Got this ridiculously large set of scissors here. So imagine it might go that way, and I might cut little kind of mountain ranges. Um, and God, the scissors are ridiculous. And it might end up being a little, a little dreamy landscape, for example. Um, and then you know, you're able to play and go, well, what does that then look like on something stronger and so forth? So you start to play around with that. Um, so you can kind of combine, you know, potentially combine different, um, different aspects really well. You might physically cut out, you know, here I've just physically cut out some of the, um, some of the leaves from these prints and that, they look quite nice on the black. So I could use that as a as a um, starting point. I think maybe this was possibly going to be a cover or something like that. Um, but you know that's got the potential to be quite um, quite nice too. Um, you can also um, incorporate, and you know I highly recommend that you consider incorporating. Oh, there's one. There's one. There's just a simple one that I was working on. I think it's a demo one last time. So, you know, just adding, you know, that's just really simple um, bits of mono prints that I've torn. It's all been torn apart from that one, but all torn up and, and kind of making a sort of mythical, um, mythical landscape. Very straightforward to do. I could then take this further and I could do something like I could bring, you know, pen, like a pen or a watercolour into it or I could I could sew it I could get on the sewing machine these sew beautifully you know like sewing machine imagine red thread sewn through that and little bits of the threaded string at the end could be really um, really lovely so that's well worth a consideration as well um, got another one around I can see a bit of it but I can't see it Here's some more that here's some more that I was doing last week, but you know, just some prepped 
bits um, that could be starting points um, but they're all cut the same size so I can kind of work from them really easily so that's good um, It's a full set of these, but I can't find them. Oh, it doesn't matter. And then there's these ones here, which I've been working on, um, which have a little, the beginnings of a little cover, which actually is kind of corrugated um, card, so it would end up being something like that, um, something along those lines. Now, what these are is a mixture of, a um, bit of a mixed bag of, um, Sorry, I'll get that talking nice. Mixed bag of, uh, of gelatin prints and some, some text. And the text is kind of collaged from, it was a, um, one of my favourite um, collage books, which is a, a how to type book. So, you know, um, yeah, like a typist sort of book. And it's got like weird kind of things that you had to repeat type. Rash, sash, hash, ash, things like that, which I find. Jed has a glue jar. Like, they're just kooky. Um, alas, falls. And I just found them really kind of evocative. Um, Alf has a red desk. A, L, a -la, alas, alas. I think maybe that was the first one. Lesson 224, report test. Um, far, far, fall, foul, falls. Sad fad, sour, sour, sour salad. Like they're just kind of a bit honky, but but I liked sort of just playing, really just playing around with um, with placement and um, you know and how how I could use a really limited sort of palette of stuff. So I had I had just you know half a dozen sheets, and I had these scraps of the leftovers of it. it was like a report or something so I had those edges of the report that I used you know kind of repeated so the same motifs are sort of repeated throughout the whole thing so it hangs together pretty well the circular motif the little holy these things the type um, so that's kind of a good way of doing it first laying it out and then working out how it's going to go on I think I'd started to think that this was going to look better on potentially on black I could sort of see that working a bit better rather than on rather than on white but I never really got much further